Thank you all for tuning in to see you at USC Thursday night. Once more, I'm your host, Nick Alfano, here with great actor, water polo player, Peter Janoff. Peter, thank you much for coming on the show today. Thank you for having me. So my qu first question for you is, you know, growing up in Slovakia in the 70s and 80s, what was it like having such an affection for American movies specifically? Well, the truth is, American movie in former Czechoslovakia, they were not alone. It uh, loosened up after President Gorbachev became to power in former Russia, and then things became more loosened. So some family movies like uh, Never Ending Story came to our country. And uh, according to my mom, I was not aware of it at the time, this movie had a big effect on me. Because in this movie, there is this kid that was my age. And uh, he one day, instead of going to the class, went to some other room where he found this uh, book. He opened it and he started reading, reading the book. Just through reading this book, he became part of the story. Like he could fly on the dog, he could beat up his classmates, he could save the country. So supposedly this had a big effect on me. And my mom told me that after seeing this movie, I became read books like all these adventure books, as before, I said no to reading. <laughs> so that will be the first touch with American movies. Mm -hmm. And what about them specifically caught your attention? Well, in this particular was that pretty much that it's everything's possible, even at the early age uh, where we grew up. Pretty much you had a life set uh, that for next 30 years you gotta work for this factory, you gotta do these things, and you're done. You know, so I kind of like the the little fantasy, the adventures, mm -hmm. and uh, the great stories. So it gave you some dreams, some dreams. sense of hopes as you were growing yes. up, right? That's and so what was the main reason for you moving out of Slovakia into America? And, and if you could describe that transition for us. Well, uh, later on also, it was, uh, it was another m type of movies that I was actually aware of them. It mm -hmm. was when I was early teenager, like every guy in our country liked those movies they were not out of. Again, in our country, it was like Rocky movies, Rambo movies, the Terminator movies, you know? Mm -hmm. So then I kind of was thinking about it. I said, hmm, this sounds something like I would like to do. Just think about it. But the more I live, the more it was in my mind. So when I was probably 15, 16, I was realizing, well, I really don't want to be growing up in this country when everything is kind of everybody's even. Uh, there is no hope for anything, kind of. So I said, well, I want to move to America, you know? I like California. I like the weather, movies are made over here. But I had no friends, no family, and no money. So my coach told me, um, well, your only chance is to study and play water polo because water polo is played at the universities. Whereas in Europe, it's played just in clubs and then became professional. So I was like, okay, study, hmm. So what I did was I went to American Embassy, got a book from all the universities that are all, all, all over the United States. And I, there was no computer that I can print something. So I had to manually, went from AS Arizona, men's sports, water polo, put it down. So I spent a lot of hours over there, came back, wrote a letter to 130 universities, approximately, that I'm a good player, but I have no money, and I need somebody who's gonna host me, and some coach who wants me. So just to, to give you an idea how naive this was, uh, I used all of my savings that my parents or grandparents put from since I was a kid. Wow. Was at the time, it was probably $500. My mother is a high school teacher, and everybody was making the same money. It was made probably 100 to $130 a month. So my father told me, go see a doctor. So spending $500 just to mail it, stuff. Two years went by, nothing happened. And uh, it came to the point that uh, some universities didn't, didn't write back at all. Some wrote back, and they were kind of like a nice, they sent me the package I didn't understand at the time. So it was coming to the point where I was start thinking like, well, maybe these people have, you know, were right. And I, but deep inside I knew I was right. So then one coach told me, well, Peter, without seeing you play, no coach will give you full right to any big school. Try community college. And I was like, what is that? So I went back to American Embassy, got a book for community colleges now just in California because I figured out uh, the best water polo is playing California by now. So I wrote to 25, the same letter. Then more, co more coaches did like me, so there was more correspondence. And one coach from Golden West, Ken Hamdorf, he found family where I could stay for free. He found some foundation that never ever paid for anybody's school, but he made them somehow believe to pay for me, and he wanted me. I remember backwards, he, he told his team, he said, I don't care if this guy is good or bad, I want him here. And the reason why he said this thing was because at the end of my letter, 
I wrote, wrote, wrote down, I said, I know the way to the top of the hill we belong in hard journey, but the slogan to myself is, believe in yourself, your dreams will come true. Just because of this, he said, I want this guy. And I remember back home in Slovakia, my English teacher told me, don't put it there because that's now not how letters are written. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting behind a computer and making decision, yes or no. And I say, it's my life, I do it my way. So I put it in and it worked out. And so your English teacher thought it was a little cheesy that you decided to put in that Yeah, it wasn't line. like the pro performance. Right, Yeah. right. And so what made you eventually transfer from that community college to USC? Well, obviously after, after two years of playing and finishing my A degree, I uh, had to transfer to school. And I like USC because uh, they have a European coach, Jovan Vavic, who knows about the sport uh, very much, the, and they never, ever won a NCAA World Pole Championship. And I like to be part of something that never been done before. So when I transfer, we as a team were lucky to win the 1998 championship. That's awesome. So that was great. So can you talk a little bit more about your successes on the water polo team as a player? Well, at Golden West, I was awarded first 1996 and 97 All-American player. And in 97, actually, they were for most valuable player for California. At the USC, uh, was All-American selection. And then you eventually transitioned into coaching, correct? Yeah, then Jovan Vavic offered me to come coach with him. And uh, yes, we coached together for probably five years. And which part of water polo did you enjoy more? Did you enjoy playing the sport more, giving USC that first national championship, or coaching them? Well, they're two different things. And uh, I like to do one I can control more. If I play in the water, mm -hmm. I can do the decisions. So. Uh, I prefer playing more. And was this a sport that you had picked up in Slovakia previously? Did you play in Slovakia before you came over to the States? Well, my father used to play, so when I was a kid growing up, uh, he used to go see his friends who were coaches and mm -hmm. then just say, well, drop Peter in the pool. So I, I knew how to swim at the early age well. So the first time I jumped in the pool, I was swimming better than most of the kids. So then I somehow start liking it. Mm -hmm. And do you believe that USC as a university, you know, through your experiences as a student and a water polo player, prepared you for kind of the twists and turns that your life would eventually take? You know, what's your view on the university as a whole? Well, uni USC is great university. I'm great to be uh, a Trojan. You know, it's a, un I had unbelievable experiences. But if you talk about the life situations, uh, I believe the sport in combination with the classes, the sport, there is discipline, you have to be on time, you have to work hard. Those things are that pays off in the real life, I believe too. Mm -hmm. And so what inspired you, you know, at a young age after you had finished your assistant coaching at USC um, to then, you know, pursue something in the insurance industry, but then to ultimately pursue something in the acting industry? Well, the acting was always, uh, when I was a kid, I mentioned there was something in the back of my mind, you know? I had to do certain things like come here, get a degree, do other stuff. So the insurance industry, uh, there was a, a guy who actually played at USC and he just uh, saw me coaching his kids and uh, he read the article in LA Times about how I got here, what I just told you. Mm -hmm. And he said, Peter, figure out how to get here from Slovakia with his letters. He will be able to figure out how to deal with Wall Street bankers. So then I started working for him and uh, it's a unique industry. I did a short film about it uh, where, just a couple of examples, we were dealing with old and rich people. We were selling the life insurance to the Wall Street investors who were creating portfolios of them and keeping it, paying for their premiums. And when people who die, they will get a debt benefit tax-free. So that's kind of a unheard of business. It doesn't exist anymore mm -hmm. to the big level uh, because life insurance kind of stopped it because they, did, they don't like to pay that benefit. They like to take the money, but right. they don't like to pay it. and. Uh, and um, that was kind of a two and a half years of my life. And was it a scary thing for you to choose a childhood dream of acting, you know, which you didn't know was going to pan out over something in the insurance industry, something that seemed like a sure thing? The, the goal with the life insurance, I knew sooner or later that business is going to be over mm -hmm. because sooner or later some people would figure certain things out. So my goal was to make money, pretty good money, to be able to make my own movies, you know? But uh, what happened was the timing was wrong when uh, I actually lost every penny with uh, with few deals, yes. It was just bad timing. Wow. And I don't feel sorry for it because I knew day one it's gonna be over, I just didn't know when. Mm -hmm. You know, so if something similar would come up, I would do it over. And so can you talk a little bit about your short film that you made? It's, uh, I, like I just said, right. I lost all the money, so um, I'm gonna back up a little bit. I'm a 
on the TV show Brooklyn Nine Nine, mm -hmm. and we get to know each other. Like uh, I'm a couple over there, some people are police officers, and this is my friend Walker. He made a couple of feature films on his home, and after he got to know me and my, the story, he came to me and said, "Why don't we do your film?" And I said, "I would do it, but I just don't have the money to do it." Right. So he said, I talked to a few people. He has professional like, director of photography with the red cameras and all the equipment. He said, he would do you for free. Your movie for free. I said, OK. So I made a couple of phone calls, get some people together. And then like the head coach from USC, Jovan Vavic, he let me use his house for the movie. Oh, wow. The another USC family that actually their son, Zach Traversi, plays for USC right now, they let me use their house for the movie. Another friend, Allison, whose kids I coach at the evenings, let me use her house and her car for the movie. So kind of it all came together to do a little short film, like a hint for investors, like, okay, this is an idea, and I don't think there was a movie about this kind of uh, deals. And so what emotions were running through you as you were you know, connecting with all these people you had met previously in life, and you realized that they were trying to help you kind of achieve your goal of making this short film? I mean, how did that make you really feel? It feels very good. I mean, uh, it's, if, I if I would not know somebody, it, they probably wouldn't give it to me. But these people knew me for over, over a certain time over years. so. They were very nice, very kind, and they supported me all the way. So it was very great. And you know, there's a common misconception in the world, you know, that sports and the arts are kind of separate. And mm -hmm. you seem to have molded the two very well throughout your life, through water polo and through your acting career. Can you kind of speak to how that's built your identity as a person? Pretty much. I think I can say whatever I apply in a water polo, or anybody, anybody that's in any kind of sports, they became some kind of successful like being on time, discipline, you know, practice, 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 it, it's going to pay off. You can use the same, stone, same steps in an uh, acting, acting industry, in any kind of industry. So pretty much it's a different field, but you apply the same steps. And do you feel that um, other people can take that combination and then have the success that you've had as well? They can. All they have to do is, number one, they must believe in themselves. Because if you don't believe in yourself, why should somebody else, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Th they have to work very, very hard. They have to say no to the people who tell them no, use it as a fuel, you know, and they, they just got to keep going, no matter how long it takes. All right, Peter, thank you very much. We'll be right back uh, Thursday night. See you at USC. Thank you very much for tuning in. We'll just take a short commercial break. And I'm here with actor and famous water polo player, Peter Janoff. Peter, thank you very much again for coming on the show. Thank you. And, you know, Peter, so when people address you as, you know, water polo player, national champion, well-respected actor right now, what about that do you find most appealing? You know, in other words, you know, what makes you so happy about that, about being addressed like that? What emotions run through? I mean, I think that when people address somebody like this as a national championship, it's that they realize Hopefully there's hard work behind it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not easy to win championship, any kind of. So in Slovakia, I was winning medals. Here at USC, winning rings. And now when I transfer it to the movies, winning some awards in the movies. Like the short film we talked about bef before. Right. Won a best short action film in uh, Temecula. And uh, just recently in Venice Beach, uh, on film festival, I got the uh, best male actor for short films. So getting some s awards on a small scale level or transfer it to the bigger level. And what uh, theater films, theater festivals, excuse me, have your films been in? There was, th those two that I mentioned, there was, uh, first it has to be accepted. I submitted to many. Right. So then in Brisbane, Australia, it got uh, People's Choice Award. And uh, actually in November, it's going to play here in LA Live. Oh, beautiful. So that's the next one coming yeah, up. Great. And being one of the actors and filmmakers who didn't originally have a theater education, do you have any advice for aspiring actors who either opt to or are not able to have that theater education growing up? They just got to, I visualize everything. I visualize since early childhood. So I visualize even I was not doing the theater, I was, it was always in my mind. The thing is just go and do it. Do student films, do short films, do anything. It's a practice, practice, practice. Right. And then you've got to believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. And can you tell us a little bit about your experience on the show Brooklyn Nine-Nine? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I mentioned before, I'm there like a uniform cup, and I'm glad that I got there. And yeah. again, because of water polo, one of the parents that I coach was able to get me on it somehow, indirectly. So um, it's a great sport. There are great people uh, going to other d TV shows. They, these people are very 
normal, very on time, very hard working, they know their lines. I just comparing to see what I saw on other, other TV shows, you know? So I'm glad to be there, be part of the team too. And what is it like being a recurring actor on the show? I mean, does that fill you with a sense of pride as well? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I didn't realize in the beginning, but there was other people, they were in this business for longer, and they told me that you're kind of lucky you get this. So yes, to me it's good, but I want more. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, uh, it's not on top of the hill yet. I right. have a long way to go. And you know, stars are on that show, like Terry Crews, Andy Samberg. Have you learned anything from them? Have you been able to take anything from their acting career and put it into your own? Be professional, like uh, I said, show up on time, know your lines, and be normal to other people, mm -hmm. pretty much. And what has been your most rewarding acting experience thus far, whether it be Brooklyn Nine-Nine or some other entity? I think the that I put this short film together with my, uh, with my friends from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, as I mentioned, when I lost everything and it was all kind of almost not possible to make it. So just to put it all together on people's free time and uh, manage everybody together at the same time to be available, that that was nice to put that piece together. And so would you say that you were almost the director of your short film in order to orchestrate everything? No, the director, it was I produced it and I wrote it and okay. I acted in it. And so what was that balance like of having all three of those roles in one? At this level, it was very exhausting because uh, if you have money, you come, you pay, I want this, this, this. If you don't have money, you have to do it all your own. And can you tell us a little bit about the day-by-day -day tasks that you would have to do for all three of those? Uh, well, day-by-day -day task. The short film, number one was to me, uh, get everybody the same page at the same day and be available. So. There was too much stuff around. Right. On the Brooklyn Nine Nine, it's kind of a, uh, I just have to put the uniform on and be there. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's pretty much it. And what kind of roles do you see yourself playing in the future? Well, I would prefer, or something that I mentioned from my childhood, with the adventure action figures. And anything specific in your mind? Well, if you talk recently, I like the movies Taken. I like the Born Identity movies. Mm -hmm. So those would be the, those kind of movies I like. And could you see yourself, you know, soon getting into discussions with um, movie producers, directors, casting uh, people, trying to get yourself into that industry? Are you trying to push forward now, or are you trying to sit back? No, and I want to. I want to go now. So if there's somebody who watches this and want to talk to me, you know, go ahead, and uh, I would like to talk to you. And you were also featured in uh, one of Taylor Swift's new music video, Wildest Dreams, correct? Could yes. you talk to us about your experience in that? Well. I went, of course, for audition for it, and I had no clue who is in it. They didn't tell us anything about it. So we went to uh, like a wardrobe people. They picked me as a being assistant director on a set. Mm -hmm. So they dress us in 1950s dress, and then director comes and he says, like, "Well, this guy looks too good. We gotta put a head on him." So they kind of like uh, cover me with a head, but I am right there. And so what was that experience like? You know, being with Scott Eastwood, Taylor Swift. How was that environment? Again, I was. I guess I'm lucky to meeting these great people because both of them were down to earth people. Like they could sit over here with you, they could sit on a, outside on the street. Simple, normal people. And how does that compare? You know, you working on a music video with Taylor Swift, you being on Brooklyn Nine Nine, and then you making your own short film. You know, what do you enjoy about each of those, and you know, what are the differences within those as well? Well, it's good to be against people that that at the top in the world because that's something where I would like to get. So it's good to see what they do, how they do, you know, what they, what we, they do something bad, so I learn from it, I shouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But pretty much it's kind of having common sense. You have right. common sense, you know what to do. Right. And, you know, had you stayed in Slovakia, what do you think that you would be doing with your time right now as compared to currently? Ooh, that's a tough question. I mean, hard to tell because I've been here since 1996. But looking at my friends, most of my friends that I play water polo with, they're all around the world. They actually play France, Germany, Egypt, Africa, Tahiti. Even they just they just went all over. Mm -hmm. So I think if I would stay there, I would have to do something probably with water polo, or because of the language skills, I can speak German. Used to speak very fluent Russian because we had to Russian and English. I may do some international business. I kind of like that idea in the past to do something, buy cheap here, sell more there, make a profit. Mm -hmm. And are you still currently involved with the water polo community as you just mentioned? I coach kids at the evenings. So 
to me it's kind of like you know everything kind of I got was because of water polo uh, I got I met people through water polo I got on a TV show because of water polo I got USC because of water polo I won championship because of water polo so I think it's always time to give back to the community or to the sport so for me to give back is maybe try to teach the kids something so they can learn and benefit later on and do you still have connections within the water polo industry are you still close with people at USC and in Slovakia yeah I mean these days is the community and people all around the world through Facebook or anything else uh, of course with Ko coach Jovan Vavic and my friends uh, that I play with uh, here and there we meet and actually alumna game is alumna game mm -hmm. is coming November uh, 7 I believe so that's where we all meet and play and so have you even though you're not officially an assistant coach on the USC water polo team have you been able to come to campus and help out whenever you can or have you just been so busy with your acting career I uh, I was asked to come and help and uh, and but I just got to do my other stuff mm -hmm. it's not even just acting it's just coaching the kids being with my daughter and so on and do you have any a connection with any of the current USC water polo players or will not that not be forged until the alumni game yeah we all talk we all talk like uh, I just talked to my uh, my friend Johnny who I asked him hey are you still working over there I say yeah, okay mm -hmm. so, you know and uh, do you know anybody on the Slovakian national team currently that you're still close with you know if you were to travel back there that you would uh, you know participate with well actually there is a player Juraj Zatovic who actually played for USC and he was all American all four year all four years and he's coming to visit over here he's gonna play the alumni game and so do you feel you know a certain sense of uh, pride as well being um, an all-american at USC I mean that puts you in an elite category so do you ever look back on that you know incredibly fondly it, it feels it's a great feeling and especially uh, like this this kind of rings when you have it on it breaks the silence even in the movie industry people come many times what is this for I said USC the water polo national team I said really and then you'll be surprised how many people in a, in, a, in a movie business they do cameras or something they went to USC you know they somehow know somebody who does water polo and then they open up to you more right you know all right well Peter thank you very much for coming thank on the you. show today I really appreciate it Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Trojan Vision, see you at USC on Thursday night, 6.30. Thank you very much. Bye.